Welcome back guys and thanks for checking out another one of our videos for those of you this this is the first one my name is Ben Fellows I do a lot of videos on QA playwright automation other general topics if you are interested in any more uh, just feel free to comment one that you'd be interested in um, today I wanted to quickly talk about the single most important thing you can do to reduce flakiness in your suites um, it certainly has had the most impact for us at uh, loop in our work with uh, working with a lot of playwright automation and that is wait for request and wait for response so um, first things first what sort of overarching problem is this referring to the problem basically is that when you're running UX UI level automation you have the uh, the possibility of what I call outpacing the API. And what I mean by that is basically performing UX UI level actions that are performed before the API is given the relevant data back. So here we're looking at basically a, a set of books. I have two added to the cart. If I click add to the cart and I'm a human and I just am sitting here and waiting for this loading screen to load, um, I will probably rarely ever check out before the API call has come back from this cart. Now it is also possible that in this example, they actually have done a good thing, which is basically blocked the loading aspect for this button behind that API call. But in a lot of applications, what you'll see is that certain aspects of the page will load before the API call has given back the other relevant data. And what I mean by that is, imagine if I was able to click check out before we had the API call with the items in the cart. Well, you're gonna see different behavior than you would expect, right? Because it doesn't really know what to check out with. You're gonna see a situation probably where it's gonna error out in some capacity, or you're gonna see behavior that you've never seen before. And you're gonna be sitting there basically being, okay, okay, my locators work, everything works. Why is once out of every five times does this fail? And the reason is, is oftentimes, in the majority of our cases is that uh, you were clicking this checkout button before your API data has been supplied. So this checkout button, which is going to look for what's in the cart in order to check out and make a new API call, um, it, it's just not going to want to do and it's going to basically stop itself. So that is performance, not necessarily functional related to your suite. So you have to think about it like your performance problem. So we're going to go in. And the first thing that you're probably going to think about is this idea of await. Uh, let's add the code await uh, page dot and then let's say load state wait for load state DOM content loaded is one or what you would do is say uh, network idle is another um, and you think okay well if I put that after the page when it's loading solves my problem it's going to wait for the load state and, and the reality about that is that in some cases that does work um, in, in other cases though what I find is that there's kind of lulls in the load state, particularly for really heavy big apps, where it will fire that the network is idle midway through loading because it thinks that there's a set amount of time that it's looking for for the network to be idle, and then it tries to keep going, when in reality, it's not actually done loading. You have API responses that you're, you're actually still waiting for. And um, so there's a better way. And, and that way is wait for response, wait for request. So what that basically refers to is as opposed to waiting for all of the API calls to, to be done, we're gonna only wait for um, a specific handful of ones that we have deemed are most important. And the nice thing is that you don't have to just wait for one, you can wait for multiple, but in this example, I'm just gonna wait for one. Um, for those of you that aren't super familiar with what I'm talking about, I'll just give a quick demo here in this uh, very basic app. It's just a free practice uh, app here. We're going to go to network. Um, if you don't know, just right click, go to network calls. You can watch your API calls. Um, if you are curious about learning more about that, there's actually a ton on the internet about it, but I'm happy to also make content about it. Uh, what we're going to quickly show though is that uh, when I hit refresh, there's a whole variety of calls that happen, but there are a specific couple of calls that we care most about. So let's see uh, which those are. In this case, that probably looks like this call right here, which is gonna be slash API slash book, and it's gonna be a get. Now it's a bit odd that it's not a cart, so we're gonna make sure that there's not, oh, perfect, and this goes back to, this is really important. Here's your shopping cart. So that's actually just as important too. So what we're gonna do quickly is look for the last call in this case that um, 
is showing up that's most important. But what's also worth noting is that this isn't necessarily linear in the exact same path every single time. So API calls, particularly API calls that aren't dependent on each other, aren't necessarily set in a linear path. So one might return before the other. So you do have to look and sort of be ready for both. Um, and so let's go ahead and just grab this one, right? So shopping cart. And what we want to do in sp spoken English is this. We want to say, all right, uh, let's just go back to the page before. As a user, when I click shopping cart, I want to click checkout, right? But what the automation is going to do is they're going to say, click shopping cart, wait for the certain response that you want. Once that response has been fulfilled, then go to checkout. And you can guarantee a much more consistent performance flow doing that. And so how we do that is we go in and we use wait for response. And there's all kinds of customization you can have on wait for response. There's actually great videos. Once again, I can link those videos about just like wait for response and wait for a request and the logistics of using them. I have a situation where I have an includes, which is basically a partial API match. Um, then I have the response status, which I care about with being a 200. You can have the post, get, et cetera, do anything you want with it. Um, but then the other thing is that I have the action. And what you'll notice is I have both in a promise. And why I have both in a promise is for the specific reason of race conditions. APIs are remarkably fast. And so sometimes if you don't have them in a promise, let's say you say, okay, click, then wait for the response, then click checkout. Well, on the rare occasion, what will happen is you'll click and by the time Playwright is ready to wait for the response, which is milliseconds, I would imagine, that response has already come back and you missed your opportunity, right? And so you've basically had a situation which is commonly called a race condition. Um, now, what you need to do is you need to basically start the same instantaneously, right? See how there's no awaits here? And so when this click happens, this wait for response is already waiting for the response. So you have a situation where you have the click and you will guarantee that you will catch that response and then once the conditions of the promise are met, then you can move on. Now there's other functionality around promises and things you can use with this uh, constant that you're creating. But for now, we're just using it to essentially avoid the race condition, right? Um, and like I was saying, you can have more than one. So you could actually add um, a whole another situation where you're, you're wanting to satisfy that multiple wait for responses have been checked off before moving on, right? Um, so what you'll find by implementing this is really, really, really consistent results. Um, and, and how to test if you have this style of a problem is basically just to like take your suite, take a test, run it five to 10 times in a row. I'm hoping you can do that if you test data is isolated and you can keep setting that up. And if that test fails one out of every 10 times or two out of fail time times or three out of every 10 times, the chances are is this is the problem in my experience. Now, um, the reason why I say that is because Playwright is remarkably stable when it comes to interacting with its locators, interacting with the sort of elements it can find on the screen. It rarely just bugs out in that sense. Why it will bug out is because the UX UI has tried to outpace the API and it's taken the action it thinks it's going to take before the environment itself was ready for it. And how you do that is wait for response, wait for request. Uh, wait for request is basically the same thing. Um, the only difference, by the way, is, uh, let's see here. Uh, the only major difference is one is waiting for the response and not the request. I tend to just wait for the response because why, you know, wait just for the request when you can also wait for making sure that the request comes back um, basically good. Um, so that's kind of my perspective on it. Uh, but yeah, that is wait for response in a promise statement, it will cut down in your uh, flakiness 10x, absolutely use it everywhere. It is annoying transparently that you have to go and find them. I've tried to download HAR files and stuff like that to make this process easier. Um, honestly, the sort of easiest thing I can tell you to do though is clear out your network call, click the action that you think has the API calls, and then, um, go take a look, right? Um, that actually doesn't have any API calls. That's kind of interesting. So um, on that front, we can click back and you can see all these different API calls. So uh, once again, wait for a response. My name is Ben Fellows. I uh, run Loop Software and Testing Services. I produce a lot of QA content. 
uh, for any QA team that's trying to build up automation, as well as we're going to start doing some great QA content and hiring QA as well as some other ones. Uh, check us out. If you like this content, please like and subscribe. Uh, check out our blog at www.workwithloop.com. And I uh, hope you have a great day, Tessin. Talk soon. Bye.